I'm distracted by the box. <laughs> well, there's a big box sitting in front okay. of you. Let's see, to, to open the box. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, we are at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show and we are with a familiar face, Shelly Sargent. She's been on the channel a few times before. She is the curator of the Somewhere in the Rainbow collection and we are so glad to have you here. Thank you, it's so good to be back. Will you kind of explain the Somewhere in the Rainbow collection, what you do for them and a little bit of what got you there? Yeah, so Somewhere in the Rainbow began in 2009 when a, I was working in a, in a retail jewelry store and a gentleman came in to buy a sapphire for his wife. He and his wife both got hit with the passion of really fine colored gemstones, handcrafted jewelry by artisans from all over the world. And what started as a sapphire purchase in 2009 has turned into a privately owned collection strictly used for education in the industry of about more than 1,800 pieces. Their passion for collecting is what keeps the collection fresh and exciting. I want to talk a little bit later about like how exactly you guys do that, but um, I'm distracted by the box. <laughs> well, there's a big box sitting in front okay. of you. See, so you open the box. <laughs> and there's a clue. Oh, okay. The owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. That must be one of the most unique clues we've ever had on the channel. <laughs> so this is a laser engraving and etching of, of your clue. Of an owl and a pussycat. And it was actually laser engraved and etched by the artist of what you're going to find when you open the box. The other thing is, is if we can get to the top, another clue, which comes from the 1800s. Shelly's motto is like, go big or go home. Right, like, exactly. <laughs> well, I just have a, a piece of jewelry or a gem when you- Well, you don't invite me back if you just get the same old mundane stuff, right? <laughs> okay, so it looks like, like a poem. It is, it's a poem. Uh, by Edward Lear, 1812 to 1888. But as we get through it, we'll talk okay. about the components of what's inside the box and how it relates to the poem. Perfect, I love it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Gosh, probably something that's not been seen on the channel before. Never seen that before. Well, I have to say I was not expecting that. <laughs> Yay! That I like it when we amazing. surprise you and your okay. and your viewers. I love that. So this particular artist, his name is Lynn Strelu, and Lynn has been featured on your channel before. Lynn has this fantastic way to translate works of poetic art into jeweled art. So this is the, the latest piece that we have acquired from Lynn. It's, it is an AGTA Spectrum award-winning design for Lynn. He wanted to tell the story of this very famous poem of the owl and the pussycat. And this poem goes that the owl and the pussycat wish to be married. And it, it's forbidden at this time. And so they hop in a pea boat and they set sail on an ocean of Arizona chrysocolla in an 18 karat gold pea pod boat lined with the tiniest savorite garnets that you've ever that. seen. And eventually they come across an island and on the island they find a pig. And the pig agrees to marry them. Yes, that that is phenomenal. Like I I just wonder what the process was of him reading that poem and being like, huh, I could create something from that. Lynn is a mind that is very deep and unknown. <laughs> He's a great artist. But what always motivates him first is the first piece that he finds and what does he see in it. So he found the pearl first and on your side, you can see the owl, yes. right? And you can see that he has a banjo and he has beautiful onyx eyes and his wings are done in platinum. Oh. And on this side, you I, have the pussy cat. Yeah, I was wondering where the cat was. Right, and the cat's eyes are actually the cat's eyes, right? His whiskers are done in platinum. Is it Chris O'Barrow? Uh-huh, Chris Barrel, Cat's Eye, yep, exactly. His attention to detail is truly unlike many artists of the world. So the sail on the boat is all fabricated, hand fabricated out of platinum. You see this beautiful purple sapphire, the drop from the mast, 
The base is, uh, the ocean is actually a piece of Arizona chrysocolla, so very, very special piece there. And as we go across the ocean and we hit the island, we find the pig who is done out of rose quartz. He's carved from rose quartz. And if you touch him, he actually has some real nice texture to his skin. So you would, like Maybe you would expect piggy. to see when you feel a piggy. <laughs> right, exactly. So the palm tree is made of rose gold, beautiful detail in the yellow gold um, tree prawns. And then the coconuts, of course, are little tiny black pearls. Oh, how cute is that? That is phenomenal. When I see this, I see a, an extremely unique one of kind piece, yeah, obviously. Absolutely. So I imagine that when creating a collection, part of that is, is creating variety, getting one of kind pieces. So how did you choose this piece? to be part of the collection. There's so much creativity. There are so many details. The finest finishes everywhere you look. And it was a captivating piece. This Is it even available? Because, you know, a lot of artisans keep their award-winning pieces. He said, you know, for somewhere in the rainbow, it would be available. Oh. He's like, I don't know that I'd let it to go to many homes, oh. but I would let it go to somewhere in the rainbow. I couldn't come with just one thing because we've missed a whole year, yes. right? So it's like having a birthday. There's one gift and then you have to have another. I love it. I'm so happy to be the recipient. We're not going to give you a clue on this, except I'm going to start by telling you that it's a very special and unique piece. Again, never to be replicated. We'll never see another. It's by an artist that we all love and cherish in the, in the gem industry. This piece is part of her endangered species collection. Without further ado. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah, can I touch Of it? course. Okay, so it's a brooch for those who can't see. His name is Okami. Okami, what does that mean? Okami means wolf. Okay, so I see uh, several different gems here. Will you explain what, what's yeah. going on? So there's a couple of things that make this piece so incredibly special, other than the fact that it is a true three-dimensional piece of jewelry art. Paula Crevache is the designer. I can tell you in all of my 38 years in the business, I've never seen anybody do this. When you roll the piece over the light, you're gonna get sheens of green and blues, some grays. What you're looking at is faceted labradorite melee. It's Wait. labradorite of the finest quality in tiny, tiny yeah. pieces. It has this agilorescence, this beautiful sheen of color play that is really spectacular. But normally you find it in big pieces and slabs. To facet it, to give you an idea of what we're seeing set in this piece, they lost four times that amount oh, in faceting that. because it's extremely soft. And so it's very, very difficult. The eyes and the nose, so the nose is black jade. The eyes are amber. They would be considered fire amber because they have that beautiful orange glow. And they are carved by a very famous gem carver whose name is Glenn Lair. The other gemstones that you're seeing in this piece are different colored, multi-colored cognac diamonds. Okay. So that's why you're going to get, you know, you'll get some grays and some browns and some, even some blacks. But the really significant part of this is the beautiful details that she has given him. Like he has this gorgeous coat mm -hmm. and you can almost just feel your hands, you know, going in and yes. just scratching through. The piece is all done in 18 karat gold, yellow and white. His ears are done with a black rhodium process. Okay. And so that's why you get that beautiful coloring. Yeah, the eyes are mesmerizing. They really, they really do glow. And we have one more to grow on. Oh, it's like a birthday. Throughout this last year, Somewhere in the Rainbow was able to acquire a piece of art like anything that's never been seen before. Have to. Ooh, a book. I can open it? Yes, of course. Oh my gosh. Does it have writing on it? Yeah. I love that. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. Still. Really, Spell everything today is really all about, you know, the birds, the bees, and the butterflies, right? <laughs> I, I've never seen this before. This artist actually takes old books, and after reading them, something comes to his mind. And whatever comes to his mind, he actually cores out of the book pages. He creates the piece. 
from that shade. What you're holding is the insides of this book. And then he has a specialized proprietary resin process that he creates the piece to make it very wearable. And the resin process will always mimic the colors of the cover of his book. <laughs> That is wild. That's great. Oh my gosh. And even though it's not really considered gemstone art, it is jewelry art on the sure. highest level. And if you can get close, you'll actually see the words that are printed out of the book. Yeah, because that's what threw me off. I'm like, the, the words are in fact on there. The creative process is so cool. Understanding where something came from just adds to the beauty of what it is, right? Yeah. Because like you were saying, from a material perspective, it might not be the, the rarest or the nicest or whatever, but when you have that story and you have like knowing the creativity and the person, and it makes it invaluable. One of my criteria for collecting the pieces that we do is that they have to evoke some type of emotion. And if I am hit by it, and others in my office or within our circle are hit by it, I know that it belongs with us because the general public are going to be hit by it. How you go about freshening up the collection. So, so you just named some of your criteria for yeah. choosing things. We talk about a little bit how that works. It's constantly a work in progress it, and it changes all the time because art is changing all the time. Artists are changing all the time. It's always based on education. We want to teach people the importance of mining. We want people to understand that if you can't grow it, you have to mine it. And with that comes a huge responsibility to Mother Earth. The lapidary arts are extremely important to us. That is a story that has to be told. So sometimes I'm looking just for the lapidary art story. Sometimes I'm looking for the mining story. Sometimes we're looking for the gem art story, right? And the jewelry making and the objects of art and the details of how one can't work without the other. So you know that we always do a closer look. Yeah. So we have to we have to pick one. But but this just draws me in in a way that I think is hard to describe. Um, the detail, the creativity, connecting it to the to the poem. It is a phenomenal piece that I want you guys to see closer. All right. I'm going to focus on Jeremy's piece. I want people to see this beautiful sculptural piece of art for exactly what it is. Thank you so much again, Shelly. We always love having you on the Thank channel. You continue to amaze us and um, make us all jealous with your phenomenal job that you have. Absolutely, it's always a joy. Thank you so much for having me and I hope that your viewers just love this segment. I think they will. If you guys wanna learn more about Shelly and somewhere in the Rainbow Collection, we'll include her information below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. And thanks for watching. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you next time.